Hey, good evening. Wanted to bring a quick word. I'm going to start doing more of these and hopefully I can uh, bless some folks with these videos. Some of you may know me, some may not. At the end of the day, I'm just a man that loves the Lord. And I've got a burden on my heart for the church, for the believers and unbelievers. And uh, those that call themselves Christians are, are going through some things in today's world. Uh, the American church is backslidden. And I, I feel that some messages would, would be pertinent. There used to be men of God in this world. Uh, Brother Clendendon, Brother David Wilkerson, uh, that would that would cry out against sin, and there's just not that many out there anymore. And uh, I can't compare myself with these gentlemen. Uh, I can compare myself with the Word of God and with the Lord. And all I know is, I love Him and I follow Him. And my earnest desire is that those that are born again and those that that are seeking Him would grow closer. And that those that aren't seeking Him would become born again and would truly follow Him. There's a lot of folks out there today giving lip service to the Lord. They claim to love Him with their mouth, but their heart is far from Him. And they try to fake it, but you can't fake it with God. He knows your heart. So with that being said, James chapter 4, I read this earlier today for our Bible study this morning. And... Um, I'm going to start with verse 4. It says, You adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. You know, before this, in context, he's talking about where the <coughs> wars and fighting, um, my scripture is over there, uh, where they come from. And he says they come from the lust that war within. And these these are... He's talking about people that are having or desiring things to the degree that is considered lust. And it's one thing for us to desire uh, food or even even working to, to provide for your family. And those things are fine. But these guys are taking it to another level. And the Word of God that James wrote, yes, he was a man. He was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Uh, God considered these people adulteresses. He put them on the same level with an adulterer or an adulteress. Man, I, I, I've been married, it'll be 29 years this year. And uh, for those of you all that, that wonder, I, man, I've been blessed with good genes. Thank you, Mom. And um, no gray hair is what I'm trying to get to. But... Uh, I've been married, it'll be 29 years this year, and I can't imagine my wife cheating on me, you know? I mean, it hasn't ever happened in, in my 29 years, at least to my knowledge, but I'm, I'm positive it hasn't happened. I've never cheated on her, you know? And, and when you are a person that's gone through something like that, and there's people all over the place in this world, in America, that has gone through this horrible thing where your spouse is, has uh, cheated against you. And you're, you know, they violated your trust. And it's horrible. I can't imagine what it would be like. And the Word of God says that God is a jealous God. And when we, when we even think about cheating on a spouse or a spouse cheating on us, a lot of different emotions would rise up. And imagine God and how he feels and when, he, when we put our faith and trust in things and, and desire to the point where we lust. You know, I'm, I'm reading scripture here. It says, even the, of your lust that war in your members, you lust and have not. You kill and desire to have, and you, you cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. And you ask and receive not because you ask amiss or incorrectly, that you may consume it upon your lust. And so God's saying, this is, this is adultery. You're cheating on God. And how many times in my life, I mean, maybe you're asking the same question, have I cheated on God. 
And, you know, the word of God just calls it the way it is. Adulterer. Adulteress. Jesus said that if you look at a woman with lust in your heart, you committed adultery. You know, I, I strive to guard my heart. I go to the gym, and there's women dressed in yoga pants, and I, I strive to look the other way. I strive to walk in His holiness, and this isn't bragging on me. This is the Holy Spirit in me, because I know the dog that's in me uh, would, would love the lust and, and, uh, and the gawk. But the Holy Spirit that's within me resists those things. So he says, you adulterer. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a cold here. You adulterer. You adulteress. Don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? I'm looking up that word enmity. Hostility. A reason for opposition. When you are a friend of the world, you are hostile with God. God provides everything you need. And when we put our faith and trust in what the world has to offer, and when we strongly desire those things over God, He considers you and me an adulterer. It's strong. Next, next uh, sentence says, Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is... The enemy of God. Are you a friend of the world? We just uh, experienced the loss of Billy Graham. Arguably the greatest evangelist of our time. Some folks say there's nothing to argue on that. Yeah, he had a lot of crusades. He led a lot of people to the Lord. And let me, let me rephrase that. He led a lot of people through a sinner's prayer. But there's a lot of evidence out there that indicates that this man was just a man i mean obviously he was a man uh but there's what i'm getting at is we've got evidence that he uh was heavily involved with the catholics now in the end if you don't know me i love everybody uh catholic people need jesus the pope needs jesus but just because you need Jesus doesn't mean you're right with Jesus. And if you're praying to Mary, Mary is not the co-mediator. Uh, she is not the mother of God. God is God. God is all existence, all eternal. God is um, all. And he is the great I am. There is none before him, none after him. Uh, Mary is not the mother of God. And so when you pray to Mary, uh, when you take a wafer and say that it, it transposes into the body of Christ inside of you, folks, that's just false doctrine. And if, if you are a person that claims that you are a believer in Christ and you not only practice these religions, maybe you don't practice, but maybe... Uh, you're someone that supports it to the degree that you embrace other people as believers. It's called ecumenism. And it's an abomination, people. Jesus, the, the Bible says to come out from among them and be separate. We're not supposed to have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. We're supposed to reprove them. And here this guy, Billy Graham, was a friend of the world. He was friends with presidents. He was friends. He said out of his own mouth, that you can be a Muslim and be saved. He said that you can be an unbeliever <clears throat> and be in heaven. He said that Mormon and Mormons can go to heaven. This is abomination. This is not true. And if this is, if this is the Billy Graham that passed away, I, I wouldn't want to be in his shoes on Judgment Day. Now, there was a time when he preached the gospel. I don't know what happened, and I don't know if he repented before he died. Okay, but he was a friend of the world. I'm telling you right now. And the question for you and me is, are we friends with the world? When we're at work, I'm not saying go out and make enemies. <laughs> you know, we don't need to go out and, and strive to be a, a, a Christian bully. What are you doing, sinner? You save sinner? You know, uh, what kind of sins did you do last night? You know, these are things we don't need to do. I mean, the, the things that, that we need to do is, is, is love on people. 
share our faith, ask God for opportunities, opportunities will present themselves. And just from you standing apart and being holy and righteous before God, people will find ways and reasons to talk about you and be your enemy. Let me wrap this up. Um, but you don't want to be an enemy of the world. Okay? I mean, I'm sorry. You don't want to be an enemy of God or a friend of the world. Let's get to the next few verses. Do you think the scripture says in vain, the spirit that dwells in us lusts to envy, but he, but he gives more grace? Wherefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. We need to repent. We need to humble ourselves before God and ask him to cleanse us, to come into our hearts. There's some folks out here that, are, that talk with their mouth and pretend that they're right with God, but they're living in sin, and you know it. God knows it, and it's time for you to wake up and stop walking in sin. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Draw close to God, and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinner. You sinners, purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep and let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness and humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. That's scripture, people. What do we hear in today's church? Okay, we hear, oh, we don't, we don't need to, uh, uh, to humble ourselves. We, we can just be who we were made to be. We don't need to submit ourselves to God. We don't need to resist the devil. You know, it's, it's not, it's, it's okay to sin. These are things we hear in church. You know, we don't need to draw close to God because he's already in us, which is true if you're born again. But we all need to draw closer to God. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Oh, we're not sinners. It's okay. He doesn't see our sin anymore. That's not true, people. You're going to be judged. I'm going to be judged. On Judgment Day. If you're living in sin, you're a sinner. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, don't be deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. There's, it's possible for you and me to be deceived. He says, cleanse your hands. And the church today will say, you don't need to cleanse your hands. You don't need to purify your hearts. Don't be afflicted. Don't mourn. Don't weep. And... And don't, uh, don't cry, don't mourn, laugh, be happy. This is what's preached in today's churches, people, and it's not in the Word. It's not there. America's backslidden. This church is backslidden. It looks like I'm upset I am. You got people that, 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 that pander to Catholicism and the Catholic way of church, of the church system that is today. The pulpit, the one-man system that dictates everything that happens. This is what church has been relegated to. And folks, me and you are the church if you're born again. And if this is the only way that we can get a message out to our, to our fellow brethren and sisters throughout the world, then so be it. But yeah, I'm upset because we got charlatans. We've got false teachers, false prophets, false preachers out there claiming to love God. And claiming to preach the gospel when they're preaching nothing but prosperity. They're preaching nothing but spiritual garbage. People, it's time for the church to wake up. It's time for the church to be afflicted, to mourn, to weep, to let your laughter be turned to mourning, to let your joy turn your joy into heaven and humble ourselves in the sight of God, and He will lift us up. Oh, people today, when's the last time you humbled yourself before God? I'm going to do it again here shortly. But I pray that this message convicts some hearts out there. I pray that this message would reach someone's heart. That the word of God would pierce into your spirit, into your soul. And that you wake up. We're in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm outside of it. We do outreaches. We try to do it a few times a month. You're more than welcome to join us. Just message me. God bless y'all. We're looking for additional fellowship, folks to fellowship with us. I don't know of a good place where people believe in the gifts of the Spirit, where people preach the unadulterated word of truth. But if there's other folks out here, reach out. I'd love to fellowship with you. God bless y'all. Thank you.